I didn't sleep with him. Todd, is he the big black security guard with the hook hand? Uh, <laughs> no. Then no. <laughs> hey guys, Dr. Sill here, Medicine and Mental Health Videos. Today we're doing another video uh, of a reaction to Scrubs. This has been a very highly requested episode called My Lunch. It's season five, episode 20, so we're fast forwarding a little bit and I think that the Scrubs uh, main characters are now residents, so they've started their kind of training towards being specialists. I'll personally be a resident next year, currently I'm an intern, so this will be very interesting to see how these guys compared to the other residents that I've been working with. And so let's stop wasting time and begin. <laughs> Todd, what are you doing? Waiting for my moment. Okay, moving on. It was time for my new daily ritual, asking Dr. Cox to lunch. Hey, Dr. Cox, what are you doing for lunch? Not having it with you, Paula. Oh, good luck eating. This is every spoon from the cafeteria. And guess what? Today just happens to be soup and frozen yogurt day. Oh, I'm gonna have uh, tomato and strawberry. Lunch for us, not going to happen. Normally I'd tell you something harsh right about now, like, we're not friends, but then you'll just grin that stupid grin and shake your head back and forth. Like, how could that possibly be true? Because it's ludicrous. <laughs> ah, just give me a spoon, will you please? Oh, for goodness sake. You've called my bluff. And today isn't soup and frozen yogurt day, it's actually salad and smoothie day. I'm still having tomato and strawberry. <laughs> I'm having a weird pregnancy craving. Hey, JD, if you go out, would you get me a hot Italian sausage? I got a hot Italian sausage for you right here. People think I just luck into these situations, but it's really a lot of hard work. You know what else is hard? I should go. I think I may vomit. So look, this is Scrubs. It's a comedy show. Obviously there's Todd, the kind of sexist surgeon who's a big character in Scrubs. Um, he would definitely have been fired by now if this was real. I haven't seen much sexist um, kind of behavior in my time as a junior doctor. It's been pretty good, very respectful between professionals, but I've heard all the stories, there's um, always stories that go around about certain doctors or certain nurses or certain uh, professionals that um, they have poor behavior and you know people usually know about them and usually they've been warned and sometimes they get fired. Um, it's always a nuanced case by case thing, but generally I think that um, the kind of uh, culture around hospitals is, is pretty good. That's of course coming from my experience as a white male, you know, kind of privileged uh, intern. Um, there's, I'm sure, plenty of uh, people who have had very different experiences as interns. If you've seen sexist stuff go down at your hospital, uh, comment down below uh, what happened and what happened to the kind of perpetrator. It would be good to see if like uh, these people are kind of getting caught out and um, disciplined appropriately, you know? Some doctors like to change into their streets when they go out for lunch, not me. I like how the world reacts to me as a doctor. Just so you know, I think it's really not cool when people wear their scrubs outside of the hospital. Terrible <laughs> section. Hey, Rebecca, you got that echinacea for me? Just kidding. You know I think all this stuff is voodoo. Good to see you. Hey. Looks like somebody else is sick of that cafeteria stuff, huh? Oh, no, what the hell? Do you follow me here? A friend dropped me off. Eagles! Hey, wanna go splitsies on some deli counter meatloaf? I can't finish a whole serving. I mean, I can, but I don't like to. It all goes right here. <laughs> Dear God, could this be any more of a nightmare? Guys! Yes, it could be more of a nightmare. Jill Tracy was a former patient who had once tried to kill herself. Sad, yes, but this did not change the fact that she was unbelievably annoying. Oh my God, what are you doing here? I was supposed to meet a guy for a date. I know what you're thinking, a Tuesday lunch date at a supermarket. He is so not into her. Well, guess what? He's not. <laughs> I've been waiting for like an hour and just thinking how many more guys from my yoga class can totally reject me without me just saying, enough, you know? <laughs> yoga pretzels, oh yeah, these are addictive. <laughs> I think I have one anyway. So, you guys wanna grab some lunch? Oh, we have to get back to the hospital. Summer. Trail mix? <laughs> I won't. Awesome, awesome. What's up? <laughs> you know what, Nobi? Stay. Have lunch. <coughs> One of those emergencies I should probably go to. How are things? Mm. You know that's stealing. 
Oh, come on, Rebecca. Everybody's doing it. I won't tell anyone if you don't. Security! Security? We've got a grazer. I don't... So let's pause. Let's have a talk about Jill, that lady they just met, who's previously had some suicidal ideation and apparently an attempt as well. She's clearly got a very positive affect, uh, a bit distractible, quite hyper, uh, quite energetic, even though she's had something bad happen to her where she got stood up on a date. She's alluded to some self-esteem issues where she's saying like how many more guys can stand her up before she stops like inviting them out to dates. But all the while, when she's saying these things that sometimes were negative, um, she's been having a very positive, happy uh, kind of state uh, until JD asks, how have things been? And then she goes, hmm, she kind of like nods her head. So there's obviously a lot more to her, um, but at the moment we can see that she's putting on a bit of an act. She's putting on a front because she's smiling even though she's talking about negative things. Uh, so there's more to talk about. Let's see how this goes. I don't think there's a security force. At... Okay. Hey, fellas. <laughs> Wherever you're taking him, take me too. And <laughs> I, no, you go ahead. Where's the shaving cream? Is that aisle two still? <laughs> I can't do this <laughs> all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Today was a busy day at Sacred Heart. We had three separate patients waiting for transplants. And we were doing everything we could to keep them alive while we could locate donors. There was Mrs. Sykes, who needed a new liver. There, there was Mr. Dennison, who needed a new heart valve. And then there was Dr. Cox's guy, Dave Bradford. So now, Davy boy, I promise you, we're gonna find you a kidney. I would literally swear on my father's grave, but whenever I go there, I usually just end up dancing on it. And so begins another round of who had the worst dad. One of my pop's nicknames for me was Sparky because he liked to like matches off my neck. We've been over this before. You win on account of your father's not dead yet. Most doctors stressed with so many people clinging to life. Dr. Cox vibed on it. As I lie in bed each morning and ask myself why I should put both my feet on the floor, there are precious few reasons that I've ever been able to come up with. Chance to escape Jordan's morning breath? Sure. Scotch. It's too early to drink it, yes, but people, it is never too early to think about. And of course, the ever-present possibility that I might finally happen upon Hugh Jackman and be able to give him the present that I've been holding for him. Bam! Still, the most persuasive <laughs> argument I've ever been able to come up with is the fact that I get to come here, this hospital, every day and help keep people alive. Well, that's ironic, because four people just died while you were talking. Look, we need to keep these people going until we can find donors. All righty, Barbie, go check on Mrs. Sykes' ammonia level. She is encephalopathic. Gandhi, review Denison's chart and get me a consent. Bobo, get on the horn to your cronies at local hospitals and get me a donor update. Fine. Some of the boys are coming over tonight anyway. I'll bring it up to Morrison while he sets up the projector for the stag flex. Just the organs, Bob. Don't need the visual of old men with erections. And now it's in my head forever. Sorry, go step up Davy Bradford's dialysis to take your mind off of it. Newbie. Feel like a sandwich? I do feel like a sandwich. Yeah, I feel more like a pastry, a very doughy pastry. I don't feel good about that. Way too easy. <laughs> I had one objective in my trip to the grocery store, pick up everyone's lunch and get out of Dodge. Small aside, how often has that happened to everyone ever? Like you see someone, you might not know them that well, you might not remember their name, so you kind of try and avoid them because you don't want to like, for me, I just don't want to like sh kind of show them that I've forgotten their name because I feel so much shame because I'm bad with the names, but I do try to remember people's names. It's something I'm working on. It's very important to remember people's names. It's their favorite word. So my favorite word will be Sylvain and yours will be your name. There you go. Actually, maybe my favorite word is subscribe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How weird is it that we're both here two days in a row? Mm. I was thinking there was like a 15% chance that the guy who blew me off yesterday just got his days wrong and be here waiting with roses. Is that sad? It's not not sad. 
Plus, I have the whole day free. My shrink couldn't make our appointment. He found his third wife in bed with his second wife and got so depressed that he downed an entire bottle of his bulimic daughter's Prozac. So now he's back in the hospital. It's an awesome story, Jill. It's true. <laughs> Prozac is fluoxetine, which is an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake in inhibitor. So if you overdose in it, you can get headaches, central nervous system symptoms, you can get shakiness, fevers, uh, if you get confused. Um, but really, all you do is you hydrate the person and monitor them for symptoms and treat the symptoms and wait for their kidneys to flush it all out. That's what you do. <laughs> hey, what'd you do last night? Turk made me watch Anaconda with him. Oh, is that the one with the giant snake? No, this is the one with the giant snake. <laughs> I was back here for 45 minutes waiting for a setup. My back is killing me, but I nailed it. It's about commitment. Hey, how could your intern Lisa sleep with him? She's a tramp with no morals. God, that was a lot to take in. <laughs> Very initial period of time. First of all, Todd, what is his end goal? He seems really happy with himself just by making a joke. It doesn't actually look like he cares about whether he's converting into like an actual conversation or a number or, or whatever. And it sounds like he's sleeping with someone. So like, why, why does he have to continue to be inappropriate with other people? Uh, I just don't like Todd's character very much. And I'm guessing this is the intern they just called a tramp. But that's a bit of a double standards, you know? You gotta be careful, because if men sleep around, they don't call, get called tramps. And if women sleep around, they do. So, you know, I think we all just have to be very nice to each other, live our lives, explore what you gotta explore, and commit when you gotta commit. There you go. Dr. Sill life lessons. I never slept with the Todd. <laughs> Lisa is sweet, and people just don't give her a chance. I wonder who else Todd lied about sleeping with. <laughs> I didn't sleep with him. God, no. Are you kidding me? Todd, is he the big black security guard with the hook hand? Uh, no. <laughs> then no. <laughs> so am I ever getting out of here? We haven't found you a kidney. As a small side point, you know, people often don't like to think about old people having sex, but it's very important to keep having sex if you if you want to and you can still do it. It's good for your heart and actually, um, People who are 70s and 80s do have plenty of sex, which is very good exercise for them and, and good for their relationships. Um, and funnily enough, what that means is that STIs especially go up um, in around the 60s and 70s. And I've heard that nursing homes often get like STI outbreaks because people like to party apparently. Uh, so <laughs> don't be silly and wrap your willy. Use contraception, old folks. <laughs> yeah, but I have some ideas. Yeah, this will do. Oh, what the hell? I can live with one kidney. Because we'll probably just, uh, just go ahead and sell this one. Stay away from my organs. Dude, what the hell are you doing? Having lunch. Cafeteria stinks and I can't go to the grocery store because apparently crazy Jill Tracy lives there. Every time I try and- Okay, couple of things. First of all, cafeterias always suck in hospitals. That's true. Second of all, having IV fluids is not having lunch because there's no nutrition in it. It's just saline. If you really wanted to have lunch through IV fluids, then you would need a TPN, total parenteral nutrition. And that's basically when you get IV food into your veins. Shop, she follows me around like I'm her only friend in the world, it's pathetic. Well, I'm gonna go talk to Carla. I'll come too. <laughs> Figured. Hey, why do you think Todd lies about hooking up with all those women? Maybe he's just overcompensating. You know, my brother Barry used to brag about all the girls he was dating right before he quit JV baseball and started dancing for Japanese businessmen. Todd's not gay. Turk, he has leather jeans in like three different colors. Barry used to dance in leather jeans. He'd come home and they'd be stuffed with yen. I'll tell you, when I first suspected he was gay, he was very subtle, but... Oh, yeah, Dale, this is totally gonna bring out your pecs. Plus, I'm using olive oil so I can lick it off later. Make them dance. Oh, they're dancing! Somebody's making them dance! Woo-wee! Wee! Tell them that never happened! <laughs> <laughs> I was there. That guy had big pecs. <laughs> I think I just got the move on signal from a hook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You can't just hook up in hospitals like that, guys. Anyway, give me the update here. You guy Bradford's electrolyte and fluid balance are stable. Mr. Dennison isn't looking so good. He's on max inotropes and still in failure. Mrs. Sykes is fully encephalopathic. Her ammonium levels through the roof. She's circling the drain. Come on now, let's try to keep these people alive. They say. Dr. Dorian, can you help me? Sure, what's going on? She was admitted a short time ago and she hasn't regained consciousness. Tox runs positive for cocaine. Oh, okay. Two things I want to say. If you're an intern, you need help from a resident or from a registrar if you're in Australia. You gotta give a better handover than that. It's likely that Dr. Dorian doesn't know this patient. You gotta give a full story, you gotta say, uh, you gotta do it isbar, okay? So that means you identify the patient, the situation, the background, um, what you think is happening and what you need from the senior doctor. And when you're telling them about the patient, you gotta give them the history, the examination findings, the um, investigation results, and the provisional and differential diagnoses you're working with. You gotta be thorough. Do you think she could have OD'd? She yeah. She uh, stood up on a couple dates and uh, she hadn't seen her shrink in a while. She was definitely depressed. How do you know all that? She told me. In hospitals, there are certain rules. With surgeons, if the overcompensating, pumped up, shaved down doctor seems gay. What's up, man? You trying a new workout? No, why? Oh, he's glistening. He's probably gay. And with organ transplants, if there's good news for one doctor... People, I've got our organs. It probably means bad news for another. Oh. You can use her organs. Thank you. Just tell me this. Is there anything anyone could have done? Unless you mean me. Is there anything anyone could have done? I think a big thing that people are scared of is if someone is depressed, people are often scared of asking them if they've had thoughts of suicide. It's very important to know that when you talk about suicide, it does not increase the risk of someone uh, dying by suicide. It's not like you can put the idea into someone's head. If someone has been feeling like they don't want to live, they've thought about suicide. You know, you're not the one that's introduced this idea. And if anything, it helps because it gives them an outlet to discuss these things. It's very hard to ask someone if they've had thoughts around suicide. And often it can um, be quite uncomfortable when they say, no, of course not, if they haven't had thoughts of suicide. But that one out of 10 times, or yeah, it's about one in 10 times where someone says, actually, you know, I've been thinking of taking some pills and you go like you you know don't you don't want to have a big response but you get kind of a small shock like oh right okay this is really serious uh, but you wouldn't have known that unless you asked so always ask if you're worried if you want to be a member on my youtube channel i've actually got a mental health first aid course which gives you some pointers on how to talk about suicide so you guys can consider that it's amazing how quickly people improve once they get a new organ whether it's mrs sykes with her new liver Mr. Dennison with his new heart valve. He still looks like crap. Or Dave. How, uh, oh, he looks great. How's that new kidney feel, huh? It's a little loose, but I'll get used <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah, you will. Hey, thanks for everything, man. I'm uh, uh, All right, people, gather around. Here we go. Hey, fun fact, you know when they put a kidney in for a kidney transplant, they don't put it up where your other kidneys are. They'll pop it down in your pelvis in your lower belly. So when he's shaking his back to see if it fits, he actually should be shaking his, his hips because it's down in your belly. Now, I'm sure we all recognize just how rare it is to get a win like this, but it seems as we are surrounded by patients who are clinging to life. Sorry, I gotta stop interrupting, but he's actually right. You would never really have this situation happen. Um, the odds of having the three people who are at the top of a transplant list for their respective organs, all in one hospital, all in one state, all at the same time, uh, uh -uh does not pass the reality test. Often people will be across the country and you'll have to fly things or at least they'll be at home or whatever because it's not the proximity is not the, it's one of many factors when you consider who gets the, the organ. I'm going to give kudos in whisper form. 
since I am an egomaniac, first props come to me. Let me hear it, people. You are some kind of superhero. You, God, you're a beautiful healer. This was not a complete and total solo effort. It was an extraordinary job done by each and every one of you. I can't hear a word he's saying. Be older, Bob. Well, just because I can't hear your silly ass whispering doesn't mean I'm old. Matter of fact, I'm going to go over to my office and tinker with my new computer. Ooh, what kind is it? It's about 3.30. <laughs> I heard what he said, people, but damn, that joke's a classic. <laughs> and why are you not giddy with praise like those other people? Don't you know I dole out compliments at most once a year, and like a squirrel, you must gather up these acorns of kind words to sustain <laughs> you for the upcoming cold, sarcastic months. Any idiot could have seen that Jill was in trouble. Supposed to be a doctor, and I'm the reason she's dead. Then he said the words I never expected to hear. Why don't you and I go grab some lunch? That'd be good. Come on. You know, I've had this thought, um, like, what could you have done differently with someone in this mental health situation? You, ha you have to, re like, in order to, <sighs> there's only so much blame you can, <sighs> what do I want to say? I guess I want to say this. At the end of the day, there's only so much you can do. If it is your friend who is struggling, you can offer support and you can just be there for them and, you know, and just remind them maybe, not too often, but remind them that there's professional help available to them if they ever need it. Um, but if that friend deteriorates and doesn't want help and doesn't uh, think they have a problem and, and things go down and things get bad, like it's really not all, it's not your fault. Like you can only do so much. When someone becomes a danger to society or themselves, like they've got a plan to hurt themselves or they're um, planning to go hurt other people, then uh, you can do more than just support. You can call the cops, you can call an ambulance because um, unfortunately the rights of others are more important than the rights of that individual if they're going to hurt themselves or others. And so they, they can be kind of um, taken to a hospital against their will, uh, which is this social, like it's socially very important that we can control people in a society that may hurt other people and stop them from hurting other people or themselves. People often have guilt when it comes to mental health things, but mental health is so complex, it's impossible to know what would have made a change or what would have just delayed something by a day. So don't live with resentment, don't live with regrets. Um, accept that you are limited in what you can do and just do your best. Oh my God, he looks so sad. I just want to hold him like a big gay baby. <laughs> this is incredible. An hour ago, you guys hated him. An hour ago, he wasn't our new gay best friend. Leave the Todd alone, okay? Because every time you two meddle, you know who suffers? Me. Remember when the janitor took that chiropractic class and you guys wanted to encourage him? Guys, uh, <laughs> I'm really not comfortable with this. No, no. You'll be fine. I've already done this on four mop heads. All right? Haven't had a complaint yet. <laughs> okay. Oh. And three. One, two. <laughs> Better? Yes. <laughs> You're fine. We're doing this. Okay, first of all, if someone's gay, like it's it's not part of your professional relationship to know the sexuality of your coworkers. The second thing um, I want to talk about is chiropractors. Look, some people love chiropractors. I have heaps of friends that live by it. I I don't have a chiropractor. I do like a massage every now and then. Yeah, chiropractors aren't well regulated as a field in Australia. So it's quite easy to become a chiropractor and it's very easy to be a very dodgy chiropractor. And if you are a dodgy chiropractor, there's no kind of regulatory body to de-license you. So that's the big problem. And there are plenty of very dodgy chiropractors. There are also those who are very sensible and, um, you know, they, <laughs> Don't think that uh, gastroenteritis is caused by misaligned vertebra, uh, you know, which is a claim from some chiropractors. So uh, you have to just be really careful um, with which chiropractor you go for. I don't recommend getting a chiropractor, but you know, you, I also recommend you live your life. So you don't, don't just listen to a random intern on YouTube either. Uh, do your research and 
Uh, make sure you feel really comfortable before they change anything in your back, but please don't let them crack your neck. I know you will, but don't because there has been not that many, but quite a few case reports of neck cracking, basically tearing the arteries that are inside the vertebra, um, causing dissections uh, of the vertebral arteries. That's very, very serious. You could die from that. Does this sound fine to you? I can fix that, buddy. On the count of three, one, Two. Oh. oh. Yeah? No. <laughs> you owe me $500. <laughs> Excuse me, could you spare a few minutes for AIDS research? Yes, I can, but I'm not sure just how much we'll get done. I'll tell you what, we'll go over here and brainstorm while we wolf down these sandwiches. Here we come. Vintage cocks. You know what I was thinking the whole time I was having lunch with Jill? What's that? God, this girl's annoying. I saw her in that supermarket too, but I'm not torturing myself. Would you like to know why? Why? Because she didn't come to the hospital looking for help. We just randomly bumped into her out here in the world. I mean, don't get me wrong. If a guy gets shot or if he has a heart attack and I am physically the closest doctor to him, I will intervene. Shy of that, you can't. I mean, you just can't. It's too much to ask yourself. Okay, I hear you. No, you don't. Once you start blaming yourself for deaths that aren't your fault, my friend, that's a slippery slope that you can't come back from. And trust me, I've seen it ruin a hell of a lot of good doctors, and I will not let it happen to you. And because he said that, I knew it wouldn't. <gasps> Game time. That's good advice. It's hot. Do you have a second? I was actually on my way to the gym. That's kind of what it's about. Whoa! Did something happen to the gym? Don't lie to me. We know about your situation. You are hiding from yourself. Stop hiding, Todd. We accept you. No matter who you love. The Todd's confused. So you baby. <laughs> well, you were wrong. It went great. I mean, at first. So as a tip, don't go to someone and tell them they're hiding from themselves, all right? If people want to come out, that is something that they do on their own kind of speed, not at anyone else's. And um, you can provide support, you can provide someone to talk to, but as a good bloody rule, unless you are a trained psychotherapist, never make anyone talk about something they don't want to. If they're not ready to talk about something and you push it, it can cause more harm than good. Blanket rule. So Todd was a little emotional, but by the end of it, he was saying how happy he was that he didn't have to live a lie. And then he French braided my hair and then he took it out because he said I could not pull it off. <laughs> oh, he is so honest. It was great. It was like he changed into a whole new person. Yes, God, yes. how awesome is it gonna be not having that inappropriate pig wandering the halls anymore? Hey, Mickhead, is that package for me? You know it is. You ladies must be so proud. Todd, what, what are you doing? I'm getting my gay on. Hey, buddy. You and I should totally have sex sometime. See, I knew this was gonna come back to me. What the hell is going on? Everybody's failing. Mrs. Sykes is indicating peripheral neuropathy in my valve transplant patient suffering partial complex seizures. How, uh, how you feeling, Dig? Pretty good. But my feet are a little numb. Yeah, I'm tired, right? Okay. I don't get it. I don't get it. That makes sense. Perry, the autopsy just came in on your donor, Jill Tracy. She didn't die of an overdose. And just like that, whatever burden of responsibility I felt was lifted. But like I said before, good news for one person can mean bad news for another. She died of rabies. Okay, people. All of our transplant patients are infected. We now know what uh. we're dealing with here. Let's get involved. We can do this. <laughs> Rabies. Rabies is a virus, usually transferred from like dog bites, um, bats as well sometimes, mostly dogs, and it lives in nerve cells and travels along nerves and destroys nerves. Um, and when it gets to the brain, it can cause um, personality changes, which um, could have been what we were seeing with Jill because um, she had that kind of strange personality um, 
those strange personality traits uh, usually causes confusion. It's also interesting how it can cause a, a, this is a random symptom, but it's very specific for rabies. It causes hydrophobia, a fear of water. So when you try and give someone with, with severe rabies um, water, it, uh, they won't accept it, even if they're really, really dehydrated. Rabies can be prevented if you get someone a vaccine with as quickly as possible after exposure. But once it hits the brain, it's really bad news. Uh, this guy had peripheral neuropathy, so damage to the nerves in his legs already. That's very advanced. That's bad news. Ty, you were impressive in surgery today. Thanks, man. You were really impressive in the shower this morning. You know, dong-wise. Todd! What? Stop it! The whole point of coming to grips with your sexuality was to accept yourself and stop being that guy. I'm sorry. This whole change is just scaring me. I'm not sure who I am anymore. Come here, get over here, oh. sweetie. Oh, I know, baby. let it out. I'm here for you. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Motorboating. <laughs> you know, I really gotta thank you gals for outing me. Chicks dig gay dudes. Hey, Lisa, I heard you lied and said we didn't do it. Admit it, we doinked. I was sad because my dad died. I wasn't. So this whole thing was an act? This guy. Oh my God, I cannot believe that I let you in that fitting room yesterday while I was trying on bras. Ew. That was a very special time for me. Unbelievable. You saw the girls. Oh, it's cool if you want to walk away, ladies. Cause I love to watch it go. Oh my God. Those. I'm about to explode. Nothing wrong with that either. Or that. Or that. the hell are you? <laughs> That's a funny last question. Uh, look, interesting. So this is a good case where I can use some of my lessons that I've learned in life. This is someone I don't like, okay? But what I have to remember when I meet someone I don't like in life as well, this is just a fictional character, um, but it's probably based off people real, people's real experiences. Uh, when I, what I have to remember is that these people are this way for a reason, you know, I believe that everything's cause and effect. We might not understand all the causes, but there is a cause for why people are the way they are. And usually it's um, trauma related. Uh, maybe he was um, sexually assaulted or something, but very likely he just had a very um, immature sexual development and didn't have good role models. And so I have to remember it's not his fault. It's the environment and the genetics that he's had that's led to him being this way. And so actually he needs help rather than hate. Um, and... The problem is if he doesn't want help, then I don't know what to do. But yeah, feeling a bit of counter-transference, feeling a bit frustrated with him. I'm the top. We did all we could over the next few days to keep the transplant patients going, but odds were against us. First, we lost Mrs. Sykes. It's just talk. He smiles politely back at you. You stare politely right on through. Some sort of window to And then Mr. Dennison. She goes left and you stay right between the lines. Fear and blame. You began to wonder why you came. Where did I go wrong? I lost a friend. And I knew that Dr. Cox needed me the exact same way that I needed him earlier. Hey, hungry? No. Just that lunch was kind of a one-time thing, huh? There's no way you could have seen that coming. I mean, rabies? <laughs> Come on, there's like three reported cases a year. In fact, testing for it would have been irresponsible. You would have wasted time if people didn't have. I was obsessed with getting those organs. You had to be. The fact is, those people were going to die in a number of hours, and you had to make a call. I would have made the same call. Yeah. Yes. Now, I got us lunch, and I think we should eat it. Right then, I knew I was going to pull him out of this. But unfortunately, sometimes the hospital picks a day where it's just going to pile it on. Oh, God.
Sorry to pause during such an emotional scene. Man, whenever you play the fray, How to Save a Life, expect the waterworks from me. Um, I don't know if this is a cheaper point or not, but that was terrible resuscitation. <laughs> okay. There was no one doing CPR. They were doing uh, uh, shots uh, at inappropriate intervals. I don't know if they gave adrenaline or not. Um, and there was way too little people. What was realistic though, if you go back, this is realistic. Um, the rubbish on the bed. When you are doing all these different procedures on someone trying to keep them alive, trying to put um, needles in uh, both arms, when you're trying to get nasal cannulas or different uh, breathing apparatus, there's heaps of garbage that piles up throughout like the 10 or 15 minutes you're trying to resuscitate someone. And a lot of that garbage, you don't have time to walk to the bin because um, you're just doing trying to do everything you can to keep this person alive. And so it just goes on the bed and it kind of piles up. And um, yeah, so usually at the end of a resuscitation, you have a bit of a cleanup to do. He wasn't about to die, was he? No, could have waited another month for a kidney. Where are you going? Your shift's not over. Hey! Remember what you told me? The second you start blaming yourself for people's deaths, there's no coming back. Yeah. You're right. I normally don't like people like Dr. Cox. Uh, I mean, I, I like him as a Scrubs TV character, but I mean, in real life, people like Dr. Cox who are rude, think they're being overly honest and uh, that they're sobering um, and are very pessimistic. And I just feel like pessimistic people have a lot of self-fulfilling prophecies and there's a lot of medicine a lot of hospitals are filled with pessimistic people who are really nihilistic and just think that there's no hope and that everything sucks and that, that you know they don't want to be in hospital but they just spend their lives there and it's very toxic and it's very contagious. Uh, if you work a shift with someone who just thinks that, that everything's screwed, you, you leave that shift feeling like crap and, and you're at risk of propagating that kind of... Um, that kind of behavior. So it's important to um, stay an optimist if you're an optimist and, and not catch the illness that is pessimism and nihilism. But even with all that said, when he, when, when you see Dr. Cox, this kind of beacon of stability and hardness get soft and cry, that just hits you. That hits you hard. Wow, that is a long YouTube video. Thank you for sticking around. If you did stick around, I wanna know who you are. Leave an emoji of an elephant uh, in the comments section below. If you wanna see more Scrubs episodes, make sure you also comment which episode you want to see me react to. Please consider checking out some of my other uh, videos. I've got videos on mental health reactions, um, reflections of being a junior doctor, reflections of my time as a medical student, which gives you a bit of a behind the scenes of hospital life. And if you wanna support me personally, you can leave this video a like, you can Join me by subscribing or becoming a patron. And of course, have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye for now.